Welcome back. Happy whatever day it is afternoon. So over the last few weeks, we've been talking about our favorite linked lists. Where, of course, we have a bunch of nodes. And our nodes are connected to each other. Okay? And linked lists are great because you can put any amount of data into a linked list. There's no capacity limit. They scale. They're relatively fast. We can do constant time operations on adding and removing things from linked lists. And as you can have as you've seen, we can use them to make stacks and queues. The problem with a linked list is that if we want to find anything in our list, well, what's the complexity of the find operation or the contains operation? It's big O of N. In a linked list, you always have to go through every element, starting at the beginning, go through every element, to try and find the thing that you're looking for. And so that's not very efficient. There's a lot of times we need a data structure that can scale, that can grow quickly, that can hold a lot of information, but where we, when we go searching for things, we want to find them very fast. And for the next part of the class, we're going to talk about a new data structure, a different kind of data structure, um, that introduces some different concepts that allows us to very quickly um, add and remove things from our data structures. We're going to talk about hashes. In our linked list, we've had a whole bunch of different methods that we've looked at. And those methods are going to come up again in the hash. They'll come up again in when we look at trees as well. And I just want to remind you of some of the issues about those methods. So let's start with the very simple thing. So we're going to have um, an add method to add something to our hash. We're going to have a remove method, maybe to take something away. We're going to look for something. So either look up or find or contains, something like that, to actually try and find a particular entry in our data structure. And then the fourth one that we may want to have is, for example, change. Right? So if I have some um, particular entry, I might want to go edit it. I want to may want to make a change to it. We've seen those in the linked list. We didn't do change, but we certainly did the first three in the linked list. Okay. Then there's um, a bunch of methods that, for example, get all entries in the list. When we talk about hashes, as you'll see, we're going to talk about keys and values. So maybe getting all keys and all values. Where we're trying to get everything out of the data structure. And then there are a group of methods that we've already seen. So for example, size is empty. is full. One that we'll introduce with hashing um, is load factor. And you'll see what that means um, in the next couple of lectures. So when you think about these methods, the ones that we've already seen, size is empty is full, when we coded them in our linked list, what time complexity did we use? Uh-oh, you guys did it all in big O of N. No, you didn't. We can do all of those methods in constant time, right? Size, it says load factor. That's a C, sorry. Load factor. Don't worry, you'll see load factor, not today, but Tuesday or Thursday of next week. So we've got a group of methods that we can do in constant time. The getting everything from a data structure, what's the most efficient way that we could do that? No. 
Can we do it in less time than there are number of things in our data structure? No, right? You can't get everything out of a data structure in less than n time, where n is everything in there. So at the best, these are going to be theta of n. At the best, they're going to be theta of n. You could code them worse, but don't do that. But by definition, they're going to be there's going to get n things out of the data structure is going to take n amount of work. So we can't change the trivial methods, the size, the is empty, is full, load factor. We can't change the methods where we're getting everything out of our data structures, but our add, remove, look up, find, and set, we can change the complexity of those methods. And as you've already seen in the linked list, when we looked at the add method, add first, add last, we can change the complexity of the add last by adding a tail pointer. Remove first, remove last. They both remove things, but they've got different time complexities. And as we go through different data structures, like our hash, and as we move into trees in a little while, it's going to be important to look at these things and think about how does this data structure affect the complexity of the add, the remove, the find, and the change, okay? Difficult, uh, important considerations that we have to think about. So we're going to move on from linked lists, and we're going to talk about hashes. So I'm almost done drawing linked lists. Yay! Not really. Woo! You guys would miss them. So let's suppose that I have some data about you guys. So I've just graded your assignment one. I haven't done it yet, but I will. When I do, I'm going to have your username, and I'm going to have your grade. So your usernames start CSSC and a zero, and they go from about 100 to about 400, because there's that many people taking the class. Um, so I'm just going to use the example of 0, 010, because hopefully nobody in this class has that, gr that username. CSSC, 011, CSSC, 012, CSSC, 013, okay? And so on down to maybe 300, 400 people that are taking 310 right now. And so I'm going to have a lot of different numbers. And for each of these, I'm going to have a number associated with a grade in this case. 92%, 100 100%, 65%, 83%. Okay. So I actually do end up with a file that has exactly this information after I've graded your work. That's how I get it into Blackboard. But for the purposes of my example, I want to create a data structure where I can add these grades, and I can associate them with your username, so that I can very quickly find those things again. If I was to put those in a linked list, if I wanted to find the grade associated with CSSC 097, I have to start at the beginning and go through IU 97, IU 97, IU 97, IU 97, IU 97, okay? So it's big of n complexity. So what I'd like to do is create a data structure where I can take some property associated, let's say, with your ID, and I can reduce that property to a single number, and I can use that number to quickly associate your ID with your data. And so this idea originally started as associative arrays. Associative arrays. And the idea is something like this. So I'm going to have a function, and I'm going to call it, and you'll see why a little bit later, I'm going to call it hash code. You'll see why I call it that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with your ID. So in fact, I'll pass in a string, which is your ID, your CSSC number. 
and I'm going to remove CSSC. Okay? I'm going to remove the CSSC part. So what that leaves me is a bunch of numbers, right? So if I convert that to an integer using one of the integer parsint methods, for example. Now what I can do is I can make an array. In fact, I can make two arrays. In array number one, here's my two arrays. In array number one, I'm going to put the student ID. And in array number two, I'm going to put the grade. So I start with the student ID. I take away the CSSC part. I convert that to an int. I've got 10. Maybe if 10 is my first number, I'm going to do integer minus 10, so that now 0 is my first number. So in this top array, I would put CSSC 10. And in the bottom array, I would put the grade associated with that. Now I could put CSSC 11 and the grade associated with it. Okay. And so on. So now I've got the ID and the grade associated with it. And in computer science terms, we think of these as the key and the value, because there are very many, many instances where we have a single key and an associated value. If you're talking about people, for example, you may talk about their age or their name or their phone number. If we're talking about um, processes, we talk about a process ID. There are many cases where we want key and value, and that's the keys and the values that I was talking about, getting all keys and all values. Yeah. Is this similar to like a bucket? It's exactly like a bucket. Okay. It's exactly like a bucket. It's a bucket of keys, or just one key in a bucket. OK. So now, if I want to find somebody's grade associated with their value, with their key, sorry. If you give me a CSSC ID, say you give me the ID 57, all I've got to do is remove the CSSC part. Now I've got 57. Convert that to an int, subtract 10, 47. Go to my array, go along to position 47, which I can do in constant time. Get the ID out, double check, is that the right ID that I'm looking for? Go to the value, get the value out. Okay. So by using these two arrays to store this data, I've now taken my find to be a constant time proposition. Right? I can now find things in constant time. I can remove something in constant time too. In an associative array like this, if I wanted to remove somebody's grade, This person, originally, I gave them 100%. If I wanted to remove their grade, what I would probably do, realistically do, is take that number, and instead of just deleting it, setting it to null, I would probably set it to something like minus 1, because they could potentially have got a grade of 0, hopefully not. But if I set it to minus 1, I wouldn't have graded minus 1 because that doesn't make sense. And so I can set a flag that says, I haven't graded this person, it's been deleted, I need to come back and look at it again. 
Okay. So this function up here that's called hash code, this is a hash function. And there are uh, many different ways that we can write these hash functions. 